Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Today I'd like to talk to you about lung cancer, or the big C, or one of the biggest health scares anyone can have, because I do get this question quite a lot. Uh, people ask me on my channel, sometimes in real life, Doctor, I've got these symptoms that have been bothering me a bit, I'm a little bit worried, could this be lung cancer? And people are really, really scared about this, and sometimes symptoms which may have nothing to do with lung cancer, or just things that maybe they build up in their head, may end up making them think that this is it, this is it, this is lung cancer, this is not something they can recover from. So people may sometimes experience chest pain, they may experience an ongoing cough, they may have smoked for a few years, and especially in those of you who are younger, who may be a little bit anxious, sometimes you may end up getting this strain of thought that this could be it, this could actually be lung cancer, especially if you've heard of someone who had lung cancer or someone in your family or someone you know you've heard of someone suffering with this condition. So this is a huge health scare. And I'd like to really delve into this a little bit. First of all, in the first part of the video to let you know that sometimes your mind can play tricks on you. And in the second part of the video to tell you basically how lung cancer is normally diagnosed. So you can try to just put yourself in, in, those, in that situation and see whether this is something you really need to be worried about. But before I begin, Please, always, if you are worried about your health, go see your doctor. Go consult a doctor, ask for their opinion in your case. Because on the internet, you may find all kinds of things. You may go on internet searches that may lead you to become very scared and self-diagnose incorrectly. Or you may get a false sense of reassurance sometimes. Because you may find information that either confirms or denies what your suspicions are regarding your health. So the mind is really not objective. So this is something you need to really be careful with. The mind can play tricks on us. It can be influenced by emotions and we can end up in situations which are not great for us, especially when it comes to health. There is something called unconscious bias. This is something you can read about in many books, in many <laughs> blog posts all over the internet. This is something that people really struggle with because our mind tends to find arguments to support what we already think. So even if it's something completely irrational, if it's something uh, completely irrational in regards to your health, you may find the right blog post, the right video that will confirm what you're thinking. And then you will just go down this spiral which leads you to really bad health decisions. So we have many blind spots when it comes to our mind and how we think about our life and our health. The mind can play tricks on us. So it's really important to just be aware of this before you become really, really scared that you are suffering with lung cancer. Now, that being said, just to give you a couple of lung cancer facts, because this is what I want to keep this video about. So first of all, who gets lung cancer? And then what are some symptoms? And then how is it actually diagnosed? Because I think it's important to know these things. So first of all, People who get lung cancer are generally older individuals. So it's not usually someone in their 20s. And I do get a lot of questions from people who are in their 20s asking me if they have lung cancer. I would say it's really rare, but this doesn't mean that it cannot happen, but it's really, really rare. Also, it generally tends to occur in people who have smoked for many years. So maybe 20 plus years, they've smoked maybe one pack a day or more for 20 years. Heavy smokers, they tend to get lung cancer more often than non-smokers. It doesn't mean that non-smokers cannot get lung cancer, but it's exceedingly rare. It's usually in people who have worked with carcinogens, with the, they've had environmental exposures to things that may actually trigger bad reactions in the lungs that may lead to lung cancer. So if that's the case, yes, the risk may be higher. If, you've, if you're someone who is a little bit older, who has smoked for many, many years, who has been exposed to all kinds of environmental toxins, etc., fumes, then maybe it's important to do seek some opinion from a doctor to see whether that may be the case. Lung cancer is rare in young people, it's rare in non-smokers. So this is something that I wanted to just tell you about who gets lung cancer because it's important to see the context in the wider, in the wider picture. Now, what are some symptoms? How does someone present with lung cancer? And this is something I can tell you from my own practice. How do people present when they are initially diagnosed with lung cancer? So it can be that someone may have absolutely no symptoms and have a lung cancer. And this is something that you may find either scary 
or reassuring, depending on whether you have symptoms or not. But it can sometimes be an incidental finding, so an accidental finding on a chest x-ray that you're having you're having it done for another reason, or you have a chest CT scan um, just for another reason. You're, you're checking for gallstones on something and something gets picked up in the lungs. And it may be a nodule that needs to be investigated further. Sometimes people who have lung cancer may have an ongoing cough, which is something that sometimes people worry about. A cough that doesn't go away for more than two months is in my opinion, an indication that you should probably check with your doctor to see what it is. In most cases, it's nothing to do with cancer. It's There can be a lot of other causes for a cough, for a chronic cough that have nothing to do with cancer. So it's just important to check if it's something that, you know, you're having this ongoing cough, you don't know what it is. Coughing up blood is another symptom that can be associated with lung cancer, but not only. It can occur in bronchiectasis, it can occur in tuberculosis, it can occur after a bad chest infection, after you've strained yourself from the coughing, it can occur in many, many situations. So just coughing up blood on its own is not necessarily a sign of lung cancer, but it can happen in patients who do have suffer with, with, with a tumor in the lungs or the airways. The other thing would be weight loss. So if you're having persistent weight loss that you cannot explain, your appetite is potentially the same, or maybe there's been a change in your appetite, but you're really persistently losing weight, uh, kilograms lost every month, and you don't know what the cause is, it's important to see your doctor. It may not be lung cancer. It may be something completely different. It may be a thyroid problem. It may be something related to your digestive system. It can be something else, but it's important to check weight loss. So this is another symptom that can prompt you that there may be something more sinister going on. The other thing would be if you're having repeated episodes of pneumonia on one side of the chest, only. So for example, you've had a pneumonia, maybe you were hospitalized or not, and your doctor told you that maybe you've had a right-sided pneumonia, let's say. And then maybe a few months later, a year later, you get another pneumonia in the same place, exact same spot, same x-ray. It's sometimes something that we are worried about as doctors because we wonder whether there's a blockage in that airway that leads to that part of the lung and whether there's anything growing there. So it can be sometimes an indication that lung cancer may be, may be the case. Chest pain is actually quite rare when it comes to lung pass, uh, cancer. So unless the tumor that's growing in the lungs reaches the pleura, which is the membrane that surrounds the lungs, it generally does not cause pain. So it's a painless disease for the reason that the lungs themselves do not have nerve endings that allow you to sense pain. So the lung tissue itself generally doesn't hurt. Unless it's one of the large airways or the pleura, it generally wouldn't hurt. So this is something to just keep in mind that you don't necessarily associate chest pain initially with lung cancer. It can happen in more advanced cases. It can happen depending on where the cancer is, but it's not always the case. And the other thing to consider is that other health events may occur which are not related to the chest at all. And that's also a circumstance when we diagnose lung cancer. So for example, someone may have an unprovoked blood clot in one of their veins in the legs or a clot that goes to the lungs and we can't find any indication for why that happened and we start doing scans etc and then we may sometimes find lung cancer. So this is another situation. Or someone who presents with abnormal electrolyte levels uh, or sodium for example in their blood and we tend to look into it and we end up discovering that there may be some kind of a malignancy going on. So these are just some symptoms. It can be completely variable. It's one of these conditions that can, can progress without any overt symptoms, like I said, or the symptoms may be completely non-specific. So if you're having chest problems, chest symptoms, it's really important to just check with your doctor to see what it is. In most cases, it's not lung cancer, it's something else. But it's just something that I cannot tell you over an internet uh, video or if you're hearing this, you need to check with your doctor. Now, how is lung cancer diagnosed? This is also something really important. So first of all, if someone suspects that you may have lung cancer, it's important to see a doctor for a formal consultation because the doctor will assess what is the risk in your case, depending on your age, your smoking history, what else has happened in your life, what other medical problems you may have. So if there is a high risk, for example, you know, there, there may be a suspicion that there may be lung cancer, you may have an initial chest x-ray, which is a very simple picture of the lungs. It doesn't tell us whether there's any large tumor, any small tumor there. So a chest x-ray is just an initial test. Normally, if it's completely normal, it cannot completely rule out lung cancer, but it may reduce the risk that there is something over going on there. However, in individuals who are, for example, older, who have smoked a lot for many, many years, 
what may happen is that your doctor may recommend a screening low dose chest CT scan. This is a scan of your chest where you get like slices of uh, basically it's, it's a complex high resolution investigation of the lungs much better than a chest x-ray where we actually see where any nodules may be. We pick up very small things. So this is something that can be done but only in people who really have a higher risk of having lung cancer, we do this screening test because otherwise we may pick up things which are not cancer, but may be suspicious and people end up having unnecessary procedures and things like that. So it's a risk benefit of having these screening chest CT scans. The other thing that may happen is that a suspicious nodule, a suspicious spot on the lung may actually be monitored just with CT scans. So for example, if something is discovered on the lungs, it looks a bit suspicious. Your doctor may recommend doing another repeat chest CT scan in three to six months just to see whether that spot is growing or not. Lung cancers do not grow overnight. So if there is a little bit of growth, it may be an indication that you need further testing. And then things like a PET scan, so a positron, positron emission tomography scan can be done because those, this is a specific type of test where metabolically active tissues such as cancer may absorb a certain marker and that marker lights up if there is a tumor and this is something that can be sometimes requested if there is a suspicion that one spot on the lung looks a little bit suspicious it may be cancer may not be cancer your doctor may request these tests so as you can see there is a lot of things that need to be done and this is just the beginning of the workup just to see where it is there may be other tests that need to be done to take a biopsy all these things to confirm whether what we're seeing is indeed lung cancer so i want to stop this video right here because if you are still worried that you may be having lung cancer, it's really important to go see your doctor. Try not to find pros and cons online because it may not apply in your case. This is really, really important. And just to reassure you a little bit before I end, most often chest symptoms are something else. They're not cancer. So this is something to really keep in mind. I'm trying to not give you false hope, false reassurance, but also not to tell you that everything's all bad. So. Basically, just try to go see your doctor if you have a health scare, if you have a health worry. It's better for a doctor to assess your situation pragmatically and tell you what, what it is, if there's something to worry about or not. I hope this helps. If you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you in future videos.